How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here. You're watching Nature Now. Anyways, so I visit this forest often, you know, to find things like invertebrates and salamanders, other water life and stuff, and I figured, you know, after all this time, why don't I finally make a video on a very common sight. Something that's found in slow moving creeks and rivers, streams, ponds and other bodies of water. And that happens to be the familiar water strider. Let's get started, huh? Water striders have multiple names. Jesus bugs, pond skaters, and skimmers are just a few of the names that we give them. They belong to the order Hemiptera, which includes such insects as plant bugs, stink bugs, assassin bugs, and water scorpions, just to name a few. In fact, I realize if you look at a water scorpion, it just looks like a stretched out water strider. So, what that all means? They're actually part of the group of insects that you can call bugs and get away with it. There are over 1,700 species identified so far, from the common species we all know to a giant species found in Vietnam, known as Gigantometra gigas. Its leg span is nearly one foot across. There is even an ocean-faring species, which as far as I know, is the only species of insect known to brave the waves of the ocean. Many species have wings, although they usually keep them folded above their backs like other members of the Hemopteran group. Some of them only have wings when they need them. Say it's getting too hot in the wetland that they inhabit and the water's drying up, the next generation born will actually have wings so that they can fly away to more promising habitat. They have two antenna like all insects. and of course, three pairs of legs. These legs are their trademark. Their shorter first pair or forelegs are used for sensing and grasping prey. The middle pair are used as paddles for propelling them along. And the third or rear pair, they're used for steering and braking. They skate across the water's surface thanks to several factors. Number one, they rely on the amazing science of the surface film of water. Two, they have thousands and thousands of tiny hydrophobic hairs covering their legs and bodies. That means they repel water. Those tiny hairs are cone-shaped and have little grooves in them that trap air. That increases the amount of oxygen between them and the surface of the water. Thus creating all those little dimples beneath their feet. All this allows them to stay atop the surface of the water, whether it's rough weather or smooth sailing. In fact, this system would support up to 15 times their body weight. On sunny days, it's really easy to actually see the little dimples that their legs create. Striders can move quite fast when necessary. They use those dimples as a bit of a foothold to push off from and propel themselves forward at speeds of up to two meters per second. The surface of the water basically acts as a trampoline for them. Imagine what it must be like to live on a trampoline all your life. That brings me to the next topic, living on the water surface as your lifelong partner. They paddle across it, jump on it, mate on it, and from what I have discovered, they even use it as a means to communicate with one another. I have seen them sending out concentric rings in rapid order and can only assume it is their version of Morse code, likely to establish territory, potential mates, 
and things like that. I would love to be able to point a laser microphone at the surface of the water and translate all those ripples into pings and pulses. I have so many ideas, but no means to actually achieve them. They are carnivores, and that trampoline is their hunting grounds. They'll feed on mosquito larvae as they swim towards the surface to breathe. And just about any other insect or spider that happens to fall or find itself ensnared by the water. Their weapon of choice is a rostrum equipped with venom. When they detect vibrations from a prey item rippling across the surface, they quickly dart over to it, grasp it with their forelegs, and pierce it with their beak-like rostrum. They'll use their rostrum to inject a salivary enzyme that breaks down the prey's internals. And then they suck up the insect smoothie. Now, something that's really interesting is when they're not mating, water striders will actually live in groups or communities. They'll even readily share their food. Now, of course, there are things that feed on them too such as birds and fish. However, most fish will avoid them because of a scent gland that repels the fish. You gotta remember, these are related to stink bugs. When it's time to mate, the males will send out a signal through vibrations that repels other males. If the other strider doesn't return the repel signal, it knows it's a female, and then it'll send out a courting signal. If she's receptive, She'll go up to him, lower her back, and he climbs on. And of course, then they mate. Now at times, I've seen males on top of females, and when another male approaches, he'll actually kick the other male away. They spend some time up there. I've even witnessed the female kicking away other males when that happens. Now when it's time to lay their eggs, They'll either deposit them on stones or branches beneath the water's surface. However, when the water is slower flowing, they'll actually lay them on the water's edge. So, as you may have already noticed, the surface of the water plays host to all sorts of different micro macro invertebrates. A lot of those creatures might spend their entire life living on the surface of the water. Now, animals that are found living on the surface of the water are actually known as pleustans. Just a quick fact. So, next time you find yourselves on a trampoline or applying rain next to your windshield, I want you to stop for a second and remember this video and think to yourselves what it must be like to live in the amazing world of water as the graceful and formidable water strider. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. It was a tough one, let me tell you. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspire spirit. Chris Ignato, signing out.